Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. She's one of the worst star ones we've allegedly starved ones that we've ever come across. An animal rescue group makes a horrible discovery, a dog clinging to life and another one already dead. Why police say they raided five stores in Pulaski County today. And WKYT investigates how to make sure you get what you pay for when you buy those big ticket items for holiday gifts. WKYT News at 6 starts now. We begin tonight with a breaking news alert out of Rockcastle County. Good evening. Police say they have arrested a man for the 2012 murder of an elderly Ohio woman. The arrest came after a grand jury indictment. 56-year-old Daniel French has been charged with murder, robbery, and abuse of a corpse, among other charges. Police arrested him in Rockcastle County, not far from the Madison County line. They say French killed 87-year-old Barbara Howe in Butler County, Ohio. We're gathering more details about the arrest. We'll have the very latest for you on WK. YT.com and tonight at 11. Also breaking tonight, police have arrested two people for a robbery at a Lexington bank. Lexington police say that 51 year old Kenneth Honekin and 24 year old Amanda Eldridge have been charged with robbery. Police say the pair robbed the United Bank on Harrodsburg Road on November 25th. They say they arrested Honekin in Lexington and Eldridge in Justman County. Starving, chained up, and badly injured. An animal rescue group tells us they found two dogs in horrible shape, and one of the animals later died. Investigators in Rowan County are now looking into this case as rescuers tried to bring the surviving dog back to good health. Miranda Combs is tracking the investigation tonight. She has it at the live desk with our top story at six. And very difficult pictures to look at, Miranda. It sure is, Sam. No one has been charged in this case, but it is an open investigation. We talked to the former owner of the dogs who says he didn't do anything wrong. A warning, though, the video you're about to see may be disturbing to you. It would be a complete stranger that passed by this home on U.S. 60 every day that would notice two dogs. Rescue officials in the county say were starving. She probably wouldn't survive more than another night or two. She is Lola. That's what those who helped rescue the Doberman are calling her. The other Doberman that was with her out here didn't make it. And when they got there, one dog had already died, and this one was found in pretty horrible condition. According to Jan Dachi, who is a member of STAR, which stands for Saving the Animals of Rowan County, Lola is suffering from skin and ear wounds, bones that are causing pressure wounds because they are coming through the skin due to lack of muscle tone. And she's currently anemic. She's she, outside with no body mass or muscle. She just had no chance of making it during the winter months that were coming ahead. We spoke to the former owner of Lola. He didn't want to go on camera, but told us both Lola and the Doberman that died were both given food and water. There was food in the bowl when we were there this afternoon. The owner says Lola would eat, but would continue to lose weight. As, as soon as they got, him to the, got her to the dog pound, she immediately inhaled two cans of food, a dry bowl of food, and she hasn't been able to get her belly full since. We're trying to monitor, pace her so she doesn't get sick, but... Um, she was definitely hungry once they brought her to the shelter. The veterinarian told Dachi on a scale of 1 to 10, he'd give Lola a zero in regard to body ratings. We've seen a lot of horrific things through the years, and she's one of the worst starved ones, we've allegedly starved ones that we've ever come across. And again, no charges have been filed in this case. They say the dog that was found dead was still chained up. At the live desk, Miranda Combs, WKYT. A star, the rescue group that currently has Lola, is trying to raise money to help pay for her care. Tonight, we are learning more about police raids at five Pulaski County stores. Law enforcement officials say it's part of a two month investigation into organized retail crime. Investigators say this is all part of a theft and food stamp fraud case. Bill Pendleton tells us what he's learned about the investigation. Police began showing up at several Somerset gas station food marts after nine Wednesday morning. At some, crime scene tapes surrounded the gas pumps. At others, people were met with a locked door and a closed sign. We are serving indictments that were sealed and returned a week ago. The Pulaski County Prosecutor's Office says a two-month investigation was launched when several stores, including Kroger, started noticing merchandise disappearing. Police say shoplifters were stealing it and selling it to smaller stores. The Kentucky law makes it very clear 
that uh, vendors are only to sell appropriate items. Ten people were arrested, and these are photos of several of them. The stores impacted were the Valero on Monticello and Oak Hill, Fast Check, Lakeway Shell, B&G One Stop, and the A&R Market. Each individual was charged with organized crime retail, which is a Class C felony. Uh, it involves two or more individuals. Police say Kroger and Walmart were the primary victims, but prosecutors say the crime has far-reaching impacts. Your retailers lose out, your wholesalers lose out, and ultimately the consumer, we're all paying the price of it. All 10 suspects were taken to the Pulaski County Jail and are due to be arraigned on December 23rd. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. A spokesperson for Kroger issued a statement that says when organized retail crime goes unchecked, it forces retailers to raise prices that customers must then pay. State tourism leaders have denied tax incentives for a proposed Noah's Ark theme park in Grant County. The State Tourism Arts and Heritage Cabinet uh, said giving Ark Encounter the incentives would violate the separation of church and state. The cabinet says the project has turned from a tourist attraction into an outreach for the Christian ministry building it. The cabinet also said park developers were not honoring their pledge to not discriminate in hiring for the park. A disturbing discovery in a Whitley County home this morning. Police say they found two small children in a home with meth. State police say they found an active meth lab on the back porch of a home on Watts Creek Road this morning. And once they went inside the home, police say they found more drugs. We got consent to search. After getting inside the home and searching, we located a backpack with uh, items used to manufacture methamphetamine, several baggies of finished methamphetamine product. Also, there were two small children inside the residence. Police arrested Roy Rogers, Kelly Rogers, Trisha Rogers, and Philip Lee and charged them with making meth and child endangerment. Police say the children were placed in protective custody. Our weather seems to be just stuck in a cold, overcast pattern. Any changes ahead? Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has the answers as he gives us the early look at the forecast. Chris? You know what? At this point, Sam, anything that is just remotely different than what we have today would qualify as a dramatic change. So uh, in that case, yeah, we'll change it up a little bit over the next few days. A little look at our live first alert defender will show us as we put the clouds on there that we are not alone in dealing with a serious case of ugly weather across the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, Tennessee, Valley into the Carolinas and parts of New England. Now, not a whole lot is resulting from the clouds. We've had some on and off flurries today. Southeastern Kentucky on cue, those higher elevations along the Virginia border picking up a little light accumulation. It is cold out there, too. Outside of a passing snowflake, cloudy skies, temperatures will drop below freezing as we get closer to 9, 10, 11 o'clock this evening with gusty winds making it feel a whole lot colder than that. Focus of the forecast when I come back in a few minutes on what else but the cold and the clouds that are going to be awfully tough to scour out in the coming days. I'll let you know if we have any success in that with the hour by hour forecast, guys, in just under 10 minutes from now. It's the Cats against the Lions tonight at Rupp Arena, the UK game against Columbia, tipping off in about an hour from now. And UK coaches think the Ivy League team will be a good test for the Cats. Rob Bromley joins us live from Wildcat Central with a preview. Good evening, Rob. Good evening, and here we are at Wildcat Central. As you said, Sam, getting closer and closer to game time. Kentucky and Columbia, the two schools, have not played since 1948. The last time the Wildcats played an Ivy League school, well, it was back in the 2011 NCAA tournament, and Brandon Knight saved the day against Princeton. Now, tonight, Columbia is expected to come in and play a deliberate style, run some time off the shot clock. The Cats saw that against Providence. They have to be patient, play great defense. It's always good to play all types of teams. You know, it's good to play a lot of different types of teams. Uh, you know, team, some teams are going to get up and pressure, and you'll see another team, you know, a week later or a month later, uh, somewhere down the road. This is, you know, a good example and another test for us to, uh, you know, see how we're going to play, uh, you know, and, and again, how we want to play, you know, the style that we have to play to be successful. Tip off 7 o'clock. The Kentucky Columbia game can be seen on ESPN2. So it is coming up now in less than an hour. I'll be back shortly. Coming up in sports, we'll hear from Antoine Walker. He's been through some tough times. Now he wants to try to help others. He's done a documentary. We'll have all that for you in sports, but for now, Sam Amber, back to you.
All right, Rob, thanks so much. All this week, we have been warning you about scams that you could encounter this holiday season. Tonight, the Better Business Bureau has a warning about a new scam popping up across the country, and it could leave you empty handed when you buy expensive gifts. Investigative reporter Miranda Combs has this scam alert. For many kids, there's that one gift they just can't wait to open. It can be pretty disappointing, especially if it's sitting there under the Christmas tree and somebody opens it only to find that. Heather Clary with the Better Business Bureau says it's a scam surfacing across the country. Shoppers purchase an expensive, popular item, take it home, only to find out it's not what they paid for. There have been stories popping up around the country where people have gone in and bought a high ticket item like an iPad or a PlayStation or an Xbox, got the item home, opened it up, only to find that somehow a thief has replaced it with bricks or paper and the contents are gone. Clary says if this happens to you, remember it may not be the store's fault. Keep in mind that the store and the consumer have both been the victim of fraud in this particular instance. So don't be argumentative, but um, it's just kind of a thing to watch out for these days. She says the best way to avoid opening trash under the tree check the item before you buy it or open it right after you purchase it to make sure it's the gift you are expecting. In Lexington, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Clary also says make sure that you hold on to receipts. It is the best way to prove what you paid for. The trial of a woman accused of setting a fire at a Lexington movie theater ended earlier than expected today. The new developments coming up. And then employees for Lexington Company spent the day shopping, all to help children around the bluegrass.